So today we're going to be checking out a game called Vigor on the Xbox One. You might have seen this before. If you've ever been into games like DayZ in the past, then Vigor is going to be right up your street. They've just moved into Season 3 in the game, which is called Rivals, and the team at Bohemia Interactive have sponsored this video. Vigor is free to play, so click the link in the description below for more information, and then down in the comments I've dropped some Battle Pass keys for you guys to grab. It is first come first serve, and there's not too many of them, but that will get you started in Vigor. And one other thing before we jump in, the game is coming to Nintendo Switch later this year, as well as obviously being available on Xbox One at the moment. So Switch players, you've got something to look forward to. Okay, so what is Vigor? Well, it's a third person loot and shoot game set in post-apocalyptic Norway in the 1990s. After a nuclear war, Norway is one of the few places left inhabitable and you, as an outlander, you have to go out and fend for yourself. You have to fight other outlanders for loot, resources and weapons in order to survive. One of your main goals is to build up your shelter and craft vital equipment, building up a stockpile of items that you can come back to time after time as you continue to set out and become the most courageous outlander in post-war Norway. When you start playing Vigor, you're going to get instant Daisy vibes, and that's not by mistake, really. Compared to the Daisy days of Armor 2, the graphical quality of Vigor is much, much higher and more impressive. It runs very smoothly on my Xbox One X at 1080p, no problem. But the same team that produced Vigor, Bohemia Interactive, they also produced DayZ back in the day. So there are going to be some comparisons that you can draw between the two, but in actuality, the two games are quite different. Vigor uses this loot and shoot motto, and it directly links into the game, where you loot, you shoot, and then you have to extract with what you find. Whereas older survival games like DayZ, they had this persistent map and there was no real home base for you to go back to. No way to build up a stockpile of ammunition and weapons. Vigor takes that gap and it fills it with shelter building, which I'll get onto in just a second. But to extract, you need to reach one of the several exit points after you've looted up and maybe killed a few players, and these are set up around the edges of each map. Here, you'll need to wait for about 10 seconds before extraction completes, and during this time, you can be vulnerable to enemies coming up behind you and shooting you in the back, so be careful to check that the coast is clear before you head into the extraction zone. But one thing you will notice whilst playing through Vigor is the environments that you're playing in. They are... Well, they're pretty beautiful, and that's to put it lightly. I think the team has done a great job here at creating some properly immersive locations. There's plenty of vegetation, plenty of cover. It kind of makes you feel like this is a real part of Norway that you're fighting for survival in. So then let's talk about your shelter in Vigor. Your shelter is basically the central hub in the game. It's a place that will have a big effect on what you do when you go out into the wild. Various areas of your shelter, they can be upgraded and improved in order to give you access to certain gameplay benefits and different features when you're roaming about in the wilderness. Each upgrade will visually change how each part of your shelter looks as well, along with different areas to craft your weapons, ammunition, and various bits of equipment. Now, upgrading your shelter, it takes real time. There's a completion timer that will let you know how long it's going to take. And so during that time, that's when you're going to be matchmaking into different encounters, going out into the wild, collecting more resources, and then bringing them back to your shelter. There are several different maps in Vigor. These are called different encounters, and you can go into those. They're different biomes with varying weather conditions, and they're going to challenge you in different ways with you to use different weapons and how you approach different scenarios. One element that you will always take part in when stepping onto these different maps, you'll probably come into contact with one of the airdrops. These are randomly dropped onto the map for you and all of the other players to see at the same time, and they contain some of the best loot that you can find in the game. Obviously, with their location marked on the map, they do become hotspots, and even more so when someone ends up taking the airdrop, because then you're marked with a periodic updater on the map. So if you take it, 
you're going to see a ping coming up on the radar above at the top of the screen. Enemies, they're going to be able to see you periodically every five seconds or so, and that's going to let them know where you're moving to. Now, towards the end of encounters, if you haven't extracted already, you will get an in-game notification that tells you that a radiation storm is closing in. And that's a little bit like a Battle Royale game where the zone moves in over time. And at that point, you will need to extract as soon as you can. If you do happen to be killed during an encounter, you are going to lose your loadout and equipment that you were carrying. It's very much a risk-reward game, Vigor. You go in knowing that if you die, you will lose what you're holding. There is one way, however, that you can stop this. There's an in-game currency called Crowns, and you can get that by simply playing the game and opening airdrops once you've extracted out of different zones. And those crowns can be used when you're in the encounter lobbies. You can buy insurance, and that saves your loadout so you don't lose any of the items if you end up dying. So maybe if you're taking your best weapon into one of the encounters and you really don't want to lose it, then you can buy insurance and that won't happen anymore. You can also use crowns here to boost the quality of the loot or boost the level of airdrop crate that falls onto the map during that round. But beware though, when you're spending crowns here, these social booster things, they apply to everyone in the lobby. And so the more people that put crowns down to boost those levels, the higher the level of loot is going to be during that encounter. During the lobby as well, you can also see what weapons each player is carrying before the action starts. That might give you a better idea on how to play the round. Maybe it's worth just dipping in and getting supplies because you see lots of people with powerful weapons. Or it might be worth gambling and going for some kills to get the maximum loot. So that's the basics of Vigor, but there are a few things around the outsides as part of Season 3 that we need to talk about. Season 3 is called Rivals, and this introduces the Renegades of Society. There's a new face wear option that's been added to the game, and that gives players more cosmetic options for their character, alongside all of the other options that are already available. There are new consumables that have been added, iodine and caffeine, alongside several new weapons including the PSS, the SVU and the MP5K, with several new XP rewards and the introduction of skill-based matchmaking. So that's going to give you games with players that are at your skill level wherever it can. Season 3 also comes with a new battle pass, giving you access to a bunch more cosmetic customizations for your weapons, including new skins for all the new guns that have just been added to the game, as well as more clothing for your Outlander. There is a free and a paid tier to the battle pass, so if you don't want to put any cash down on Vigor for the time being, you're just sort of getting into the game and seeing whether it's for you, you can still get your hands on some rewards for playing. And with the game being free to play, there's no barrier to entry whatsoever and that's really nice to see. And then lastly for Season 3, we have a new game mode called Shootout. One of the sticking points Vigor had when it first launched was the only very limited ways to play outside of the different maps that you could get onto. And Season 3 somewhat resolves that problem by bringing in a new round-based game mode that is completely the opposite to Encounters. Shootout takes place on a small section of the Sawmill map, and it's going to be a seasonal event as part of the Rivals season. In the game mode, the more kills you earn in 10 minutes, the better your score, and then you're awarded XP based on your performance, as well as a nice chunk of food at the same time. Also, you don't have to worry about dying and losing your loadout in this game mode because the match simply continues until time runs out, and that makes it very different from the type of mode that Encounters is, and it's a lot faster paced, and some people might enjoy that. So, with what I've played of Vigor so far, I have had a pretty good time, and it's certainly offering something on console that not too many other games offer, which is great. It's free to play, and it has a monetization system that's fair for all players, this optional battle pass with free rewards, which is awesome, so I can see the appeal of why you might want to jump into this game. Season 3 has brought some new spice to the game, with the shootout game mode, something that players had been asking for, and there are a bunch of quality of life updates thrown in there as well. So if you want to try the game out, go down into the description, you can click on the link for more info, and you can find the game in the Xbox Store. And don't forget to check the comments section for those Battle Pass codes. Once they're gone, they're gone. Thanks very much for watching today, drop the video a rating if you enjoyed it, and I'll catch you all in the next one.